Hey, I'm Paul Brown, Santa Barbara Festival 2020. I'm awful glad to be here, and I hope we can all be together in person, maybe next year. Let's uh, give a ho good hope for that, but we've got some great music coming your way throughout the festival, and uh, hope you'll get a little bit out of this workshop, which is old-time banjo songs, how to help your banjo express itself the best in a song setting, and how to make all the instruments work together, in particular your voice and the banjo to get the message of a song across. Here's one that I learned from my mom when I was a kid. It's called Summer is Almost Gone, and uh, it's got a lot of other titles in the folk music world, but her version was basically an African-American version of the song that she learned from John and Harry Calloway. I'm tuned in open G. And by the way, whether you're a beginner an intermediate or a more advanced player, you should be able to get something out of this workshop. I certainly hope you will. If things are going a little faster than you're comfortable with, then look and listen, learn the old time way, pay a good attention and work on it at home. Uh, you can look at the video for a while after this event as well. So that'll be a good opportunity for you. If it, things are going along right at the uh, good speed for you, just dig in and get everything you can out of the workshop. And if you feel it's a little bit on the slow side, maybe, Here's the, the trick with that is just to refine, refine, refine your timekeeping, your phrasing, your technique on the banjo. So you'll still get something out of this workshop. I hope you'll have some good ideas that, that uh, you can use through the rest of your career as a musician. Summer's almost gone, summer's almost gone, darling, summer's almost gone. Laid around and stayed around till summer's almost gone. I done laid around this skin game too long. Okay, there we are. Summer is almost gone. Just a little bit of that song for you that I learned from my mom. And one of the things that I think is important about the banjo when you're playing songs, really, of course, in any environment, string band as well, is to understand its core characteristics. And for me, the core characteristics of the banjo involve melody, drone, rhythm, and backup. And if you recognize that the banjo is organized that way as a drone instrument and that any string on the banjo can be a drone string and that it works really well when you're alternating lower sounding tones with higher sounding and drone tones that it will sound a whole lot like a banjo should then you're off to a really good start. After that you keep good time and rhythm and for my money, I think a simpler backup to a song is often better than a more complex one because it lets your voice come out when you're ready to sing and allows the message and the story of the song to come through. So when I play this song on the five string with uh, claw hammer style 
I will often play a very simple and straightforward sound. And like old man Tommy Jarrell from Surrey County, North Carolina, used to play claw hammer, one of the things I learned from him that was really important was to be able to use a first or second string, some other string as a drone string. It doesn't always have to be the fifth string. So you wind up alternating between a low string and that first string in the G tuning. All the way through, and then occasionally he'd use his fifth string, but not always. So when I'm singing a song in, in this uh, open G or A tuning, a lot of the time I will take advantage of that understanding of the way the banjo is organized with lower strings against higher strings, a downbeat against a backbeat, and the backbeat is often though not always a drone. Now you might have noticed that I played some finger picking on this tune as well and that the volume of the banjo backed off when I was singing the verse of the song. I think that's really important to bring the voice out and let the banjo be a supporting instrument, a supporting voice, if you will, while you're singing. So oftentimes when I'm playing claw hammer, I'll just play along like this when I'm singing. Just a few melody notes in there and back off the volume a bit. And then I will sometimes switch to a finger picking style. Typically in my case, it will be thumb lead, which is how I play most of my two finger old time picking. And there are a few basic techniques that you can pull together in the G tuning to play effective backup in, uh, th in thumb lead two finger style picking without doing anything super fancy, but you can still make great music. So one of the things is to have a uh, strike and a pinch. So I'm plucking down on the third string here with my thumb and then first and fifth simultaneously with the index finger and the thumb. Has a great banjo sound to it, doesn't it? And then there's an alternating uh, technique in which you play thumb on the third string, index on the first, thumb up on the fifth string, and index on the first again. And that comes out this way. Combine that with the thumb lead and the pinch, and you've got a really old time country sound uh, on your banjo to back up a song. with your banjo to make it sound good to back up a song in this G tuning. So um, this style of playing the two finger style, by the way, is really good as also a lead style of banjo with a song and it can work out well in particular with a guitar. Here's Mike Seeger playing guitar with me on my album Red Clay Country on the song Jesse James. Just let's listen for a second here. Jesse James, Jesse James. So there's a little bit of Jesse James, Mike Seeger on guitar, yours truly on the five string banjo. And I learned that version of the song from Fields Ward, the Ward family of southwestern Virginia. Fields was a great guy. He knew a ton of songs, and he was a wonderful guitar player. And Mike uh, was trying to play a little tribute to him in the way he played the guitar on that song when we made that recording years ago. So uh, what's going on here with Jesse James is very straightforward two-finger style picking and then an even simpler backup. <laughs>
and then simplify it even more when you get ready to sing. Jesse James, Jesse James, there's no more of Jesse James. Robbing the banks and trains. He was shot on the slide by little Robert Ford, and they lay Jesse James in his grave. So there are some ideas in the uh, old-time G tuning for backing up songs, and I think you'll uh, be able to put them to a lot of use with some of the songs that you know. At least I hope so. Now, um, let me get another banjo here. And uh, here's another tuning that I really like to use in songs. And it's based on the old Cumberland Gap tuning in the mountains, which was F sharp, B, E, a D. Okay, F sharp B E A D. But because my voice has changed all through the years, probably as yours has or will, and sometimes I can't get all the high notes that I used to be able to, or maybe I can't get a low note, or it just sounds better to sing something in another key, I will often sing songs in E. And you can accomplish that by simply taking this tuning. F sharp, B, E, A, D, and bringing it up a full tone. Now, I've got to look down here at my notes because I always get this wrong otherwise. And have uh, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, B, and E. Same intervals, just one full tone higher. You could also use a, you know, a capo to, to boost things up and turn the fifth string up, but I prefer to just tune the banjo up. And right now, in quarantine days, we've got all the time to do whatever we want. So you can tune your banjo up and have it sound great. So now this brings me into the key of E with this tuning. And here we are. It's really a cool tuning to use for songs because it's somewhat equivalent to a guitar in the key of G. And your basic chord, your number one chord, in this case the E, is right here at the third fret of the fourth string with your middle finger and the second fret of the third string with the index finger. And now you've got a one chord right there and you can play claw hammer or two finger picking or three finger picking. Has a great sound to it. And then your two, your uh, four chord in the, in the, in the scale is going to be just the same fingering, but moved over one string. So now that's all you have to do. So you're now your middle finger is on the third fret of the third string. Your index finger is on the second fret of the second string. And then your five chord, you know, three chords in a song, it's sort of a faux five chord, and you can get there by just having the second fret on the uh, first string and the fourth string. Me and my wife, my wife, Pep, we all walked over the Cumberland Gap. Cumberland Gap, Cumberland Gap, we all walked over the Cumberland Gap. So you can get all your melody notes there, and then when it comes time to sing, you can just pull things back a little bit once again. So speed it up a little more to tempo. Cumberland Gap's terrible place, there ain't no water that'll wash your face. 
me and my wife, my wife's pet walked over the Cumberland Gap. Me and my pap, old blind dog, we cross that river on hickory log, hickory log, hickory log, we cross that river on hickory log. So now you've got claw hammer style, two finger style, all out of this one tuning, and it's not complex. It sounds a little more complex than it is. I didn't say it's easy. It's relatively straightforward and simple, and that supports a good song. So just get in the woodshed and practice this a little bit. And your claw hammer. And then practice simplifying it out while you're singing some so the story of the song can come through. Another great thing about this particular tuning is that since it is on the banjo and we're now in the key of E, it is wonderful for certain types of blues songs and blues tunes. Of course, one that I sing a lot, I also learned from my mom, going down to Tampa, settle down. And I mostly finger picked that. I've done that ever since I was a kid. And uh, it works out really well because you've got your flatted blues notes at your disposal. And if you pinch and drag some of these strings around, you can get some really great microtones with it. My mama, she told me when I was nine years old, you'd better be a hustler, gosh darn your hard luck soul. I've got my ticket in to tell you what to think I'll do. I'm going down to Tampa, settle down. Settle down, settle down, settle down. Settle down, settle down, settle down. I've got my ticket in to tell you what to think I'll do. I'm going down to Tampa, settle down. Okay, so your blues is right there waiting for you in this tuning. And that's the one chord, your four chord, your five chord, and then explore from there. It's all there. You hardly have to move. Then you can step out and do some other things later. All right, now quickly here. Here's another tuning that I really like on the five string. Um, let's see if I get this fretless in tune. It's pretty good, pretty good tune. It, this is the uh, the old F C F C D tuning, or you can also play it as G D G D E, and that will put you either in the key of F or the key of G, depending on where you are. And uh, I've even tuned it around even lower than that. On uh, one of my albums where I did Lazy John, um, I played this way down. I think it was in D sharp or something like that, or E flat, and because I w wanted to sing it a little bit lower. So uh, you can check out that album, Red Clay Country, and hear the whole thing with Matt Brown on the guitar backing up the banjo. It works out really well. Um, but you can get a totally different flavor for uh, out of your banjo for, for certain songs using this tuning. Uh, it sounds a little bit mournful, a little bit plaintive or poignant that way in the way that the straight G tuning doesn't. So for example, when I started out singing in G, Summer is Almost Gone on the other banjo, uh, the uh, uh, Gibson Mastertone, it had sort of a country music 
sound to it, and in a way it has the the positive sound of a fully major key. But the intervals on this tuning are just a little bit more mournful. And you can play the same old song and have it sound quite different. And sometimes I do. I like to play this song on this banjo. I'm going down that road and that summer's almost gone. Summer's almost gone, darling, summer's almost gone. I'm going down that road, and my summer's almost gone. And darling, I don't know what to do. same techniques there that I was showing you before and I'm playing a little slowly so you can follow along and hope that's okay but you can also claw hammer it get around to singing, I really do simplify it back even more. Sometimes I'll just do something like that. Now the light in the graveyard outshines the sun, outshines the sun, darling, outshines the sun. Light in the graveyard outshines the sun, and darling, I don't know what to do. I done laid around and played around till summer's almost gone. Summer's almost gone, darling, summer's almost gone. Laid around and played around till summer's almost gone. And I laid around this skin game too long. Up picking claw hammer works really well with a fretless banjo and a song it has a different sound to it. Got on laid around and played around till the summer's almost gone. Summer's almost gone, darling, summer's almost gone. I'm going down that road and the summer's almost gone. And darling, I don't know what to do. And don't ever let anyone tell you you can't sing a gospel song on the banjo with the banjo because you sure can. Here's a little bit of Heaven Light is Shining on Me. And I found out that it worked great on a fretless banjo with this mournful tuning. And on another banjo, or even maybe this one, it would also sound great with the guitar. This happens to be a really good tuning if you've got someone hanging around with a guitar to back you up. It's just, you'll see. Give it a try sometime, you'll see. Heaven light is shining, shining on me. Heaven light is shining, shining on me. Way up yonder in that new bright world, well, it's heaven light is shining on me. That some have fathers who are gone, are gone. Some have mothers who are gone, are gone. Way up yonder in that new bright world, well, it's heaven light is shining. shining on me so there you have it some ideas for songs and uh, how to bring out the best qualities of the banjo melody 
drone rhythm backup in your playing behind the songs that you enjoy singing. And that ought to keep you busy for a whole long time. I'd love to hear what some of you come up with, and I hope we'll get to be together in person so that I can get a chance to do that. Last thing I need you to do is to sound like me. These are just some ideas, and I hope you'll find your voice using some of these ideas that I've benefited from, from the old-time players, from my mom, and many other people I've met along the way. You can get in touch with me at my website. You'll see it here, uh, Brown, uh, paulbrown.us.com, paulbrown.us.com. And there's a place there on the contact page if you want to write me a note, ask a question, anything like that, and I'll try to respond. It's been great to be here. Hope you enjoy the rest of the festival, and we'll catch up. Remember, keep on the sunny side. It'll help us on our way. It really will. See you down the road.